Hey, don't mess around, you traitor. You're going to hell, like you deserve. What? What are you suddenly talking about? What do you mean, suddenly? Are you seriously saying that? I don't understand the meaning. Why do I have to hear such things from you? Think about what you've done. Are you still holding a grudge about our divorce? It was a legally decided divorce. It's pointless to bring it up now. Huh? Who's digging up the fact that I divorced you now, of all times? Then what's the deal with suddenly insulting me? If you don't want to have a conversation, then don't approach me. It's you who doesn't understand. Then explain it properly. Do I have to say even these things for you to understand? Why didn't you come? Huh? Today, you weren't here, right? Wait a moment. What are you talking about? Why didn't I come for what? Even after I say all of this, you're still acting clueless. I don't understand the meaning. It's my mother's funeral. Funeral? Your mother's? That's right. This heartless woman. Wait a moment. Your mother passed away? Pretending like you don't know is pointless. I didn't hear anything like that. Don't be stupid. I sent it before. What are you talking about? Sent what? I don't know anything, okay? That can't be true. I definitely sent it to you. I'm looking back at the received messages now. But as I suspected, I didn't receive anything. Don't lie. I won't be fooled. How did you send it? It was an email. I sent it to your address. Hold on. Let me check again. You're probably going to say it didn't arrive anyway. It's pointless. I have the sending history on my end. When did you send it then? Yesterday. Yesterday? That's right. I sent you an email yesterday afternoon telling you to attend the funeral. I didn't receive a response and now you've skipped today's funeral too. Could it be? What is it? Did you finally remember? This. The subject was Mother's Funeral, Come Attend. That email, right? That's right. It clearly reached you. You ignored it. Was this for real? Huh? That's obvious, isn't it? Yesterday was April 1st, right? It was April Fool's Day, so I thought it was a malicious prank message. What did you say? Don't joke around. I'm sorry, but I deleted it as soon as I saw it. I just found it in the trash folder now. Why would you delete it without permission? It was obviously an important email. I apologize for accidentally deleting it. But you also have a part to blame. It's my fault? Where does that even exist? Tell me. It's your habitual misconduct. Misconduct? You have the audacity to say that? Well, haven't you been telling low-quality lies on April Fool's Day for a while now? Huh? Don't you remember it yourself? I don't recall telling such lies. Like saying you won a billion yen in the lottery, and that you're done with me. That was just a joke. It wasn't something that could be dismissed as a joke. There's more. Like saying a relative got arrested for a bank robbery. That's the kind of lie that can be easily dismissed, so there's no problem. No problem, you say? Where is it fine? It caused a huge commotion, saying they needed bail money and all. You're the one who made a fuss without reason. 
it's not because I was worried about your relatives. You were constantly telling lies that toyed with people's emotions and caused pain. It's your fault for being gullible. Anyone with common sense would know it's a lie. Are you blaming my lack of intelligence for it? I'm disgusted. Don't make excuses just because you're frustrated about being fooled. It's not just about April Fool's Day. You're someone who casually tells lies on a regular basis, so I couldn't trust you. Especially this time. I couldn't believe it was true. Hey, don't mess around. Don't make it sound like it's my responsibility. You have a significant responsibility, too. No matter what, I've never lied about something like my mother's death. It's something that anyone can understand with a little thought. That's your own biased thinking. What do you mean by that? Because you've been constantly lying and deceiving people. It's impossible to simply believe something that sounds like a lie but is claimed to be true. How insolent. Don't change the subject. Is it even appropriate to inform such important news through just an email? An email is sufficient. You should have called. If you had, this misunderstanding wouldn't have happened. Are you trying to shift the blame just because you didn't notice the email? The responsibility lies with you. With emails, you never know when they'll end up in the spam folder. Are you setting my emails as spam? I'm not talking about that right now. You informed such important news through an easily missed email, and on top of that, you gave it a title that sounded like a lie. You really don't understand a thing, do you? It's you who doesn't understand. You never used to send emails in the first place. But you loved my mother, didn't you? Yes, of course. Unlike you, your mother was very kind to me. Yet you didn't even attend her funeral. That's why it makes me even more angry. It's heartbreaking that she passed away. And it's shocking that I couldn't say goodbye in the end. Honestly, I still wish it was a lie. Unfortunately, my mother really died. Why? She was fine last year, at the end of the year, wasn't she? It was an acute heart attack. She had a minor chronic illness since long ago. I see. She treated me like her own daughter. That's why you better gather money quickly. Huh? Money. It's money. You understand, right? Money? I don't understand. What are you talking about exactly? It's for the memorial service fee, obviously. Memorial service fee? My mother took care of us so much. It's normal to pay a memorial service fee as a gesture of gratitude, right? Um, by the way, how much is this memorial service fee supposed to be? Well, it depends on your feelings towards your mother-in-law, I guess. But at the very least... You should pay no less than $10,000. $10,000? That's an outrageous amount of money. I've never heard of such a thing before. What are you talking about? It's common cultural practice in Japan. It's called koden, or offering of condolence money. Japan? Why are we suddenly talking about Japanese culture here? I have relatives in Japan, you know. That's why I'm familiar with it. No, that's not what I meant. It's a wonderful culture, isn't it? Remembering the deceased and providing financial support. Huh? Funerals can be expensive. And it's a culture that considers the well-being of the surviving family members. Did that relative of yours really say such a thing? What's the matter? Are you doubting it? 
It's not that, but $10,000 is too high of an amount. I loved your mother, but I can't afford to give such a large sum. You don't have the right to refuse. You should apologize sincerely for not being present at the final farewell. Apologize to your mother with $10,000? She wouldn't say such a thing. Don't presume to speak for my mother's feelings. You're just a stranger to her now. What is it? If we're strangers, then I shouldn't have been called to the funeral. That's a separate issue. You should show gratitude for the help you received. I understand that there's a cultural practice like offering condolences in Japan. But this isn't Japan. That doesn't matter. We can adopt good cultures from anywhere. It's up to each individual's feelings to make it meaningful, right? No matter how different the culture is, you should understand that much. Feelings? Yes. I think it's a wonderful culture, but it shouldn't be forcibly demanded and given. What did you say? You're not going to pay? At the very least, I don't want to comply with such a one-sided and high-pressured demands. The amount of money is also very high. So you're saying you can't express your gratitude to my mother. What an ungrateful person you are. It's true that I couldn't attend the funeral, and it's been very difficult for me. But I do visit the grave and offer plenty of flowers. Isn't that a way to express feelings towards the deceased? Flowers, you say? What difference does that make? Don't say ridiculous things. Hey! What is it? Aren't you ultimately just after money? Huh? What kind of baseless accusation is that? That's how it seems to me when you use your mother's death as a way to demand money from people. When did I ever do such a thing? Right now. You've been talking about money only since earlier. That, that's not true. Don't make unfounded claims. Hit the nail on the head, didn't I? But it's clearly strange, bringing up the culture of another country out of nowhere. I just happened to hear about a good culture and thought it was worth mentioning. Then ask your so-called relatives in Japan if it's normal for a condolence gift to cost $10,000. If you won't ask them yourself, I'll find out. That's... If you won't bother, I'll do the research. You're so annoying. It seems like you don't even care about mourning your own mother-in-law. I am mourning. A lot, actually. If you can't pay, then don't claim to be mourning. Why? Money has nothing to do with the feeling of mourning someone's death. Fine. If that's how you feel, then I'll come directly to collect it myself. What are you talking about? There's no way you can collect it by force. Oh, I will. It'll be an enforcement. Two days later. Jack? There's something I want to ask you. What is it? Have you decided to pay the money? Earlier, I returned home, and the window was open. Oh? I'm sure I locked it before leaving in the morning. Besides, the house was ransacked. That's terrible. The drawers were emptied, and the entire chest was a mess. I thought it might be a burglar. Well, who knows? Just before I was about to call the police... I remembered something. I might actually know who the culprit is. Oh, really? And? Could it be that you came to my house without me knowing? Oh, yeah, I did. Just a little while ago. What? 
What exactly do you intend to do? I told you before, didn't I? I went to collect it. Collect what? Your mother's condolence money or something? That's right. If you have no intention of paying, then I have no choice but to collect it forcibly. I can't believe this. Are you out of your mind? You're the one who's out of your mind. Not repaying any gratitude to the mother who took care of you? There's something wrong with you. You just want money for yourself, not for your mother, right? Don't use your mother as a shield. It doesn't matter what you say. When someone refuses to pay what they owe, sometimes you have to take it by force, right? Do you even realize what you're doing? This is a legitimate claim. Well, there was only about $300 anyway. You stole it? Stole is such an unpleasant word to hear. But with that amount, it doesn't even come close to what I'm claiming. I'll make sure you pay the remaining balance in full. I'm going to sue you for this. Don't think you can get away with it for free. Sue me? What crime are you planning to sue me for? First, I'll sue you for unlawful entry. I'm going to report it to the police. The police won't bother with such family disputes. Family disputes? You and I are strangers. We've been divorced for a long time. If you're really determined to sue, I have my own idea. An idea? I'll sue you, too. What are you talking about? There's no fault on my part to be sued for. I'm going to claim compensation from you. Compensation? Compensation for what? Everything. You disregarded and insulted the death of my mother. I don't want to hear such things from you. You're the one disrespecting the death of your mother. Huh? Because that's the truth. You're just using your mother's death as an excuse to demand money. And on top of that, this burglary-like situation. Hey, did you say burglary? I'm genuinely furious at your pathetic excuse. The house is also in complete disarray. I'm going to involve the police. I can't handle this on my own anymore. Even I got injured because of you. Take responsibility. Huh? Injured? What are you talking about? When I entered through the window of your house, I scraped my back on the window frame. My shirt even got torn. Are you kidding me? It's your own fault, isn't it? It's because you're not paying the money that things have come to this. Originally, this kind of hassle wasn't necessary. I'm appalled. Anyway... $300 is nowhere near the right amount. I'll come back another day to collect the remaining balance. What? You're saying you'll come back again? Of course I am. I'll come back as many times as it takes until I receive $10,000. You're frightening. I can't believe it. If you find it scary, then just pay the money already. Don't you understand what you're doing? I'll come again, so be prepared. Oh, by the way, don't forget to prepare the compensation. I'm adding that too. What? Wait a minute. Hey! Next day. Hey, something terrible has happened. What is going on here? You must know something. Explain it. Father-in-law? Finally, a response. Explain it right away. What on earth is going on? Please wait. Calm down a little, please. I will listen to you and explain. Calm down, you say? How can I calm down in a situation like this? Why are you suddenly losing control? What happened? If you don't tell me, I won't understand either. It's my son. Jack has been taken away by the police. It happened this morning. Ah, I see. 
judging by your reaction. You must know something, right? Yes. First of all, I was the one who reported him to the police. What did you say? I will explain the situation to you, so could you please listen? Fine. Go ahead and tell me. First of all, I'm truly sorry about your wife's passing. Ah, I see. It was so sudden, and I haven't been able to come to terms with it myself. It feels unreal, you know. I feel the same way. Your wife was always so kind to me. My son Jack was quite upset that you didn't attend the funeral. He was extremely angry about it. I'm truly sorry about that. I did receive the funeral notification from him, but there were misunderstandings and miscommunications. I was unaware of the passing and went on without knowing. I see. Since my wife and you were close, I was a little puzzled by your absence. It's truly regrettable that I couldn't bid her farewell. Please allow me to visit her grave. Of course. Go and pay your respects. It would make my wife happy, too. Thank you very much. Now, going back to the topic. Ah, please, get to the main point. Because I didn't attend the funeral, he has been blaming and accusing me harshly. And then... He asked me to pay him $10,000 as a memorial fee. $10,000? It's an unbelievable amount. I told him that I can't afford it. Well, that's understandable. I've never heard of such a thing, and I don't see any reason to pay either. That's when it turned into an argument, and he started saying he would forcibly collect it. Forcibly? Are you saying he wants to forcefully take money from you? How? I thought the same thing. I didn't take it seriously and thought he was just joking. What has he done? Why is he saying such incoherent things? I don't understand either. And then, the other day, my house was broken into and $300 was stolen. What? Are you serious? I couldn't believe it myself, so I asked him, and he readily admitted that he did it. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. I was also shocked and confused, and what's worse, he said that since it wasn't enough, he will come and steal again. Doesn't he realize that he's engaging in criminal activities? I also warned him, but he didn't listen. Instead, he even demanded additional compensation. When he took the $300 with him, I asked him about it. I asked, what happened to that money? What did he say? He claimed that he received it from you. He said that you voluntarily gave it to him. What? That's a lie. That money was stolen from my house. It feels like a nightmare. I truly have no words. He confessed that he entered through the window himself. He also mentioned that he would break in again, so I consulted the police. So that's what happened. I just lost my wife, and now my son is involved in something like this. Honestly, I don't know what to do. But I have done terrible things to you. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, father-in-law. He is the one who is at fault. In times like this, how reassuring it would be if my wife were still here. I'm truly sorry that I couldn't attend the funeral due to being manipulated by his lies. I, too, had been taken care of by your wife countless times. I apologize for ending up in this situation. No, you don't have to apologize. Once my son returns, I'll make sure he apologizes sincerely in person. It's not necessary, really. He seems to genuinely despise me. What my son did is a crime. He must reflect on his actions. Also, you don't have to pay the money he demands from you, of course. Thank you very much. If you're willing, please visit my wife's grave. She would be happy if you came. Yes, of course. I will definitely go and pay my respects. 
Next day. Hey, respond, will you? What are you going to do? It's all your fault. What? So we can communicate again. What did you say? It's all your fault. What are you talking about? I haven't done anything wrong. It's because you're withholding the money. Because of that, my life is a mess. My fault? It's your own doing. You actually reported it to the police. You better be prepared. Not reporting it would be strange. You're the one who committed the crime. Hmm, but you know what? I've already been released. What did you say? It ended with a questioning and a strict warning. I'm finally free. They treated it as a family matter and handled it lightly, huh? Ha ha, too bad for you. Well, there won't be a next time. If you don't make improvements, despite repeated warnings, you'll get caught. No doubt about it. Speaking of which, did you say something to my father? Just when I finally got released from the police and was looking forward to relaxing, as soon as I arrived home, my father was waiting with an upset expression. Oh, so you managed to anger your father-in-law. He can be very scary when he's angry. Huh? Why are you reacting as if it's none of your business? It feels like none of my business because it's about you. You got caught by the police. It's because you reported it to the police. We're not on the same page here. It's your fault for doing something that warrants being reported. As soon as I arrived home, it was endless lecturing and complaints. Oh, really? What did they say to you? It's embarrassing that you ended up like this. I don't remember raising you like this. Mom would be saddened if she saw this. None of that is true, except the facts. After getting lectured by the police, I came home. I even got lectured by Dad. On top of that, the neighbors treat me like a criminal. The police coming to our house must have quickly spread rumors. But it's all the consequences of your own actions. It's just the worst. It's a nightmare. I can't even repay my debts like this. Huh? Debt? Wait, you're in debt? Well, not exactly debt. Just borrowed some money. Borrowed money is still considered debt, isn't it? Stop being so naggy. Don't sweat the small stuff. Did you get involved in gambling or something? You didn't have any debts before. It's not exactly gambling. More like a little game. A game? It's become popular among friends, you know? Games like poker, board games, you know. Oh, and also betting on which team will win the next soccer match. You can't be serious. That's right. Just playing isn't fun enough. We play with money at stake. So you're gambling. It's just a little game we play among friends. It's not a big deal. So how much debt did you accumulate? My luck hasn't been great lately, you know. I've been unlucky. That doesn't matter anymore. It's not good. I've been losing. Losing and even lost in a high-stakes game to make a comeback. I'm down about $10,000 overall. $10,000? You mean you have a $10,000 debt? I don't want to believe it, but yeah, that's the situation. I've been trying to cover it up, but the guys I've been playing with are pressuring me to pay up. They're demanding payment soon. This is unbelievable. I never thought you would not only get involved in gambling, but also accumulate such a large debt. That's why I'm counting on getting that $10,000 back from you. So it was $10,000. It's clear that your feelings towards your mother were just a sham. Truly despicable. I thought if I said it was for my mother's sake, I could get my hands on $10,000. You and my mother were closer than me. 
I don't care about that. I just need the money, no matter what. You're still saying that. Exploiting the overseas culture and the death of a family member? Have some shame. If it weren't for the debt, things wouldn't have turned out like this. If you had debt too, you would understand how I feel. If your late mother found out, she would be saddened. I don't want anything to do with someone like you ever again. Stay out of my life. Wait. But you must feel sad about my mother's death, right? Of course I feel sad. It's obvious that I feel sad. Then it's fine if you help me, thinking it's for my mother's sake. What do you mean by that? Because my mother was a kind person, she would have helped me in one way or another, in my current situation. Really? Maybe so. What does that have to do with me? I want you to help me, taking my mother's place. I thought you would carry on my mother's will. It's true that I loved your mother deeply, but you know I'm not your mother. Can you stop with these convenient thoughts? The feelings I have for your mother and the feelings I have for you are completely separate. It's something you should understand if you think about it rationally. But we have a connection, don't we? I don't have a single cent to give you. Stop using your mother's name for your own desires. It's making me sick. My mother would be saddened by this. Is that okay with you? Yes, she would be saddened by your ugly behavior. Hey! Well then, I'll make one concession. What is it? I'll let the theft incident slide this time. Huh? In return, become a decent human being and make amends to your mother. It will take a lifetime. What? And to your father as well. Your actions have added even more burden to the already difficult situation after your mother's passing. You should apologize properly. It's impossible. It's meaningless. What? What's with you? Right now, it's all about money. It's meaningless if it's not about money. You still don't understand anything, do you? You're the one who doesn't get it. Instead of lecturing, just give me the money. What did you say? I'm saying this for your own sake, you know. If it were true, I'd cut off this conversation right away. For my sake? It's none of your business. Just give me the money already, if you're saying it's for my sake. You're beyond help, you idiot. I can offer a special deal right now. I'll waive $10,000. Consider it as payment for the alimony. How about that? It's not a bad offer, right? Shut up. Hey, I'm begging you. The truth is, I don't have a place to live and I'm in trouble. What? No place to live? Yeah, that's right. I don't understand the meaning of it. It has nothing to do with me, though. Don't say that. We used to have a connection, didn't we? There's no connection anymore. I couldn't afford the rent, so I fell behind on payments. Even so, I managed to ask the landlord for an extension. So you hadn't even paid the rent? It's the worst situation. And then my father came to the house and we had a big fight, so the neighbors complained. Finally, we received an eviction notice. It's not my fault. You got addicted to gambling and kept losing, but you didn't stop. I admit I was stubborn at times, but I never thought the debt would escalate to this extent. I don't know. You're the one who let the debt spiral out of control. I don't even have the money to stay in a hotel. Looks like the only option is to go to your parents' house. Apologize to your father. It's impossible. 
My father told me not to come back home. Well, of course he's angry. He must be furious. If that's the case, I want to stay at your place. Let me stay as a temporary guest for a while. Don't be ridiculous. If you keep saying that, I'll file a formal complaint for trespassing. In court. Come on. If you have nowhere to stay, then get arrested and live in prison. You should understand that you're not in a position to ask anyone for help. Hey, listen to me properly. I'll say it again. I won't file a police report against you. In return, never have anything to do with me for the rest of your life. Thereafter... I deleted all of his contact information and set my messaging settings to block him completely. Afterwards, as promised to my father-in-law, I visited my mother-in-law's grave. At the gravesite, I apologized once again for not being able to attend the funeral. And instead of money, I offered a lavish bouquet of flowers, the kind that my mother-in-law loved. I completely cut ties with Jack so I have no idea what happened to him afterward. My father-in-law also mentioned that he couldn't reach his son, but I have no way of knowing. I heard through rumors that he fled from the hometown to escape his debts. Truly, he is an utterly despicable person. I am living happily to this day. Laura, enough is enough! To bring up the past and seek revenge like this now, it's cowardly. Do you want to make us suffer so much? Mary, what are you suddenly talking about? What did I do exactly? I didn't do anything. Don't play dumb. You put trash in front of mine and Kevin's house and even graffiti on the wall, didn't you? Trash? Graffiti? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you to cut it out already. You're the only one who could possibly be responsible. Do you find pleasure in making us suffer? You suddenly contacted me and accused me of something I had nothing to do with. What are you trying to do? I broke things off with you and your group for good. We're not even childhood friends. And yet you are saying I am now searching your house and harassing you? Don't underestimate me. Hm. Our house is easy enough to find out about if you just ask around to acquaintances. You still hold a grudge against Kevin, don't you? That's right. This is your revenge for having your husband taken from you three years ago, isn't it? What are you talking about with revenge? I told you I don't know anything about it, didn't I? I really wish you would stop this already. Kevin was drawn to me because you have no appeal. So it's neither Kevin's nor my fault, is it? It's your own problem, and yet you act like we're the villains. You used to shout all those things back then, too, but didn't we forgive you for all of that? We even let you say your insults and anger because we couldn't help it. And yet you're still harassing us like this. If you have time to do that, then go work on improving yourself. You're not attractive, so you need to put in more effort than others, right? Don't you understand even that much? <sighs> you really don't listen, do you? It's not really me who's causing the trouble here, you know. I'm the one who's being harassed and bothered by you. Please stop already. Are you still bitter about losing a high-income, high-status husband? It's impossible for you to find someone like him now, isn't it? If you dare harass me again, you'll regret it. Hey, Laura. I heard from Mary that you were harassing our home. You seem to be the culprit. Do you still have feelings for me? Can't you forget about me yet? You suddenly contacted me and brought up this topic? I told Mary that it wasn't me. I'm not the culprit. Stay away from me. Are you planning to deny it now that you've been caught? How pathetic. Deny what? Huh? I already told you it wasn't me, didn't I? What do you and your wife want from me? Sorry, but I have a wife and family. I don't care about you anymore, haha. <laughs> Can't you stop bothering me? I'm not doing anything. It's not me, you know? I'm grateful that you introduced me to Mary when we were dating. 
Thanks to you, I was able to find the person I truly love. But that doesn't give you a reason to harass me, does it? You're an adult, so you should understand that. Oh yeah, I remember now. Looking back, I'm glad I introduced a guy like you to Mary. Stop pretending you are strong. You still want to see me, don't you? That's not true. I broke up with you. I have no intention of ever getting involved with a man like you again. You're just pretending to be strong, aren't you? You wanted to get my attention so badly that you resorted to harassment, right? I get it. I'm not a devil either. If you really want to meet me, I'll do it for a fee. How about $100 per hour? Why should I have to meet you? Absolutely not. I'm actually struggling financially too. Mary controls our household finances, so I only get a $300 allowance per month, which I've realized isn't enough. I don't know anything about it. I don't know what to say even if you tell me that. If you still have feelings for me, I'm willing to be with you if you pay me. I'm a nice guy, you know. Treating me as an ATM? Stop joking around. I don't want to pay you any money. Don't you want to see me too? You're actually happy when I message you, aren't you? How much more are you going to mock me? I already told you that I don't want anything to do with you. This chance is a one-time thing. If you pay me, we can meet even though we can't go back to how things were between us. I think it's the best offer for you, don't you? You pay me and I'll put up with it. I'm being kind, right, lol? Sorry to interrupt, but I'm already remarried and living happily with a kind husband. I don't want to have any more involvement with you. Please stop messaging me. Remarried? Who would marry a woman like you with no redeeming qualities? You're obviously lying. Doesn't that make you sad? Enough already! I cut ties with you! Don't ever contact me again! Your lies are so amateurish. I can see right through them. Did you really think I would be fooled by such a transparent lie? Do you want to make me jealous? You are such a shallow thinker. You just want to make a fool out of me, don't you? Well, do as you please. Goodbye. Flora, you harassed us again at our house, didn't you? I told you to stop it already. Here we go again. I already told you before, it's not me. I didn't do it. There must be another culprit. Don't lie. You're happy to see me suffer, aren't you? No, I'm not thinking anything like that. I just don't want to be involved with you anymore. I want to forget everything. Why would I start harassing you again? Hm. What excuse do you have now? There was a pile of garbage in front of the entrance and even graffiti on the exterior wall. Why are you being so persistent? Just forget about Kevin already. Hey, Mary, if you really think I'm the culprit, do you have any evidence? Did you report it to the police? I'm doing you a favor by communicating with you, so don't talk down to me. I'm not talking down to you. If you suspect me, do you have any footage from the security cameras? Did you consult with the police about security measures? The culprit should be found, I'm sure. Why should I have to spend money on buying security cameras for your sake? I refuse. If you just stop harassing us, everything would be fine, wouldn't it? Mary, I've said it multiple times already, but it wasn't me. I'm being accused without any evidence. Can't you understand how I feel? Oh, I see. You won't admit it even if we go that far? Why would I admit it? It wasn't me. If you just apologized honestly, I would have forgiven you, but forget it! You owe me $60,000, including emotional damages. What are you talking about? It's about compensation! Pay $60,000! Why do I have to pay money? I'm telling you that I'll keep it from the police if you pay. Pay it! I'm not the one who did it. I'm not going to pay. It was for two months. You harassed me for two whole months, so you should pay for it! Two months? You mean it lasted that long? You're the one who did it! Don't act surprised now! Hold on, Mary. It's impossible for me. I was on a trip with my current husband for those two months. What? I went on a trip abroad. There's no way I could have harassed you. If you want, I can show you pictures from the trip. See? Do you believe me now? Wait a minute. You were remarried? Yes, that's right. 
I thought you still have feelings for Kevin. Not at all. I've denied it completely, haven't I? Remarriage is proof that I'm happy with my husband now. W wait what I haven't heard that you got remarried. Why didn't you tell me? We've been childhood friends, right? Why do I have to tell you? You're the one who stole my husband. You're a homewrecker, aren't you? I won't bother telling someone like you about my remarriage. But I thought you were harassing our house because you have unfinished business with Kevin. That's why I've been saying from the beginning that it wasn't me. I've said it many times. There must be someone else who's the culprit. Th that's... You really seem to have been convinced that it was me. Is there no one else who might have a grudge against us? Like someone who, like me, got involved with someone else's boyfriend or husband? Isn't there anyone else? I, I don't know. Okay. Well then, it's not my concern. You have no choice but to continue to endure the harassment, so then... Wh what Are you heartless? Can't you help me a little more? I'm really in trouble. I'm sorry for suspecting you of the harassment, so please help me. We're childhood friends, right? So, I don't care about us being childhood friends anymore. You ruined my happiness, and now you want me to help you? That's too much to ask for. If you want help, go ask your beloved Kevin for it. He even asked me for money because he's short on cash, so I'm sure he'll do anything for you if you pay him. Wait a minute, Laura. Please wait. I'm sorry, but I have a life too. I can't keep being tossed around by you guys. Harassment is a bad thing to do, but I can sure understand how the perpetrator feels. Anyway, do your best, and that's it from me. Goodbye. Laura, listen to me. As you suggested, I installed a security camera. Then, it turned out that my friend from university was the culprit. That woman, she still held a grudge against me for stealing her boyfriend, so she was harassing me. Isn't that the worst? I can't believe she would do something. What's with the attitude? I'm glad the culprit was found. Why are you venting your frustrations at me? You suspected me so much, and now? But Kevin said that it might be you, so I thought it was you. I'm really sorry. But you know what? My university friend is also terrible. She said I put my hands on her boyfriend and collected evidence to demand money. Oh, wow. That's really something. It must have been hard to collect evidence for something that happened years ago. Why are you taking the culprit's side? I'm telling you, it's been tough for me. That woman demanded $10,000. Don't you think it's ridiculous? Wait, hold on a second. You said you stole her boyfriend back in college, right? What? That's not it. It happened recently. Recently? You mean after you married Kevin? That's what I'm saying. If it happened in the past, I wouldn't remember it. You know, she has every right to be angry. I can't believe what you're doing. Don't you think it's awful? What are you talking about? You cheated and now you're trying to deny it. Just pay up and take responsibility for what you've done. Why should I have to pay? It's not my fault that the guy was willing to come up to my room after I invited him in. Don't you agree? Didn't you know that the man you approached was your college friend's boyfriend? Huh? How could I not know? She was always bragging about him on social media, so I thought he was a great guy. But when I talked to him, he didn't have any good qualities and he didn't have any money. So we broke up after only a week. You know, stop ruining other people's happiness. You have always been like this since you were little. You stole my precious doll and when my art piece won an award in elementary school, you started saying things like the one I made was stolen without any sense. And then... You even started flirting with the boyfriend I was dating, you know that? Even with Kevin, I didn't want to introduce you, but you threatened to make a scene if I didn't, which was really scary. So I had no choice but to introduce you. And as expected, you started cheating with Kevin. But I was just envious, you know? It's natural to envy someone who has something better than me. How can I understand that? I respect that friend of yours from college. Knowing you... You probably took some of that friend's things, too, like their makeup or perfume. Am I wrong? Well, that's... I just borrowed them for a little while. See, considering what you've done, I can't sympathize even if you're being harassed. 
Kevin was the same way. It's a good thing I broke up with that cheating man, but at the time, I was so devastated. If I hadn't met my current husband, I might have resented you too and not even be in this world anymore. Have you ever thought about that feeling? I'm sorry. It's no use apologizing now. Hurry up and pay your friend the $10,000 and apologize properly. That's all. Wait a minute! Listen to my story till the end! What now? Is there something else? Well, that's because my friend thought I was going to run away when she told my parents about it. Oh, I see. So she knows how to treat you, huh? And then my parents got really angry. I haven't even been able to connect them since. Oh dear, so you're completely cut off? Well, I made sure to explain the situation to your parents when I divorced Kevin. What? You did that? Yes, they were angry then too. Your father said it was embarrassing to have such a daughter. That's why you couldn't even go to your house to introduce Kevin, right? Mom told me later that there were some screams coming from your house that could be heard all over the neighborhood. So that's why Dad didn't meet Kevin. What should I do? I was thinking of asking for help with the payment. Help from your father? Why do you need his help? You were asked to pay $10,000, right? That's right. Well, it's just that I can't pay it. $10,000 is a lot of money. That's why I wanted my dad to help me. Is $10,000 a lot of money? You're in charge of Kevin's money, right? Then why can't you pay $10,000? You still haven't admitted your guilt, have you? Admit it and pay up properly. That's not it! It's just that the constant phone calls from the collection agency are so annoying, so I was planning to pay it off, but Kevin's salary is hardly anything. Nothing? What? Did Kevin quit his job? He seemed so happy working before. No, he's working. He's working, but... But what? He's not giving you any money? That can't be right. Kevin said he didn't have enough allowance, so he must be giving you money, right? I heard he entrusted it to you. You're not saying you haven't saved any money, are you? I haven't been saving money. What? He earns more than the average person. Why can't you save? But because... I spend it on going to salons, beauty parlors, and the other day they released a new makeup. And they said that only the first hundred people get a bonus, so I had to hurry and buy it. And I can't be satisfied with cheap aesthetic treatments. That's why I've been using our money for those things, and now we don't have any left. Mary, I'm sorry, but I can't empathize with you at all. It's all for your own sake, isn't it? Does Kevin know that the money he earned is being spent on beauty salons and aestheticians? Have you told him that? I can't say that! I told Kevin that I'm saving for our future children, and I want him to help me save by cutting back on expenses. Well, even more reason why I can't sympathize with you. You lied to your husband, selfishly spent money, cheated, and even got disowned by your parents. And now what? What do you want me to do for you? Do you want to borrow money? I'm sorry, but I have to refuse. Knowing you, you'll just borrow the money and disappear without a trace. It's not my problem. Please don't say such cold things. Please help me. We've been childhood friends, right? Please. No, I won't do it. Being suspected as the harasser, having my husband taken away from me. Why do you think I would help you? I've said it many times before, but I don't want anything to do with you two anymore. I'm living happily now. Don't bother me anymore. Don't rely on me. Don't contact me anymore. Laura, please help me. I'll apologize. It's too late for apologies. It's already too late. Well then, goodbye. Good luck with the payment. Laura, please. Laura, help me. Laura. Laura, can you listen to me for a sec? Mary is such a terrible person. After she married me, she apparently cheated on me. And now, the woman she cheated with is demanding money from me. And since I can't pay, she's asking me for help. Why do I have to help someone who cheated on me? Isn't that ridiculous? Why are you complaining to me? I told you I don't want to get involved with you anymore, right? If it's about your marriage, you should try to solve it with your spouse. Can't you just listen to me vent for a bit? We're friends, aren't we? 
Besides, listen to this. I asked her what level of guy she cheated on me with, and she showed me a picture of him, and he's a whole lot uglier than me. She made excuses like, when I changed my voice, he came with me, but cheating is cheating, right? How did I end up marrying someone like her? I'm such a pathetic guy, don't you think? Not really. Why? Why? Because I got cheated on. Don't you feel sorry for me? Don't you remember what you did in the past? When you were married to me, you cheated on me with Mary, didn't you? You're okay with your own infidelity, but you criticize Mary for hers? You're the lowest of the low. What? what's your problem? Are you still angry about that? Isn't it obvious? You betrayed me. Do you think I can just forgive that? Just so you know, I've known since childhood that Mary is that kind of person. She believes that it's okay to take or steal anything from someone who is inferior to her. And yet, you followed such a woman. If you can't forgive being cheated on, shouldn't you blame yourself first for cheating? D don't be so angry. I'm sorry. Don't you think you shouldn't be so angry with Mary? After all, you did the same thing. Just pay her the money, you have it. What do you mean, just the money? What do you want from me now? I told the same thing to Mary, but I'm happy with my current husband. Please don't interfere. You're just a nuisance. You and your spouse are. If you understand, don't contact me ever again. Goodbye. Mary apologized to her college friends and parents, but they didn't forgive her. She somehow managed to gather the money, but it turned out to be from selling Kevin's expensive car that he bought as a hobby. Kevin was furious that Mary sold something that belonged to him without permission and suggested a divorce. He insisted that Mary return all the money she embezzled under the guise of a salary management, but Mary refused to divorce, using her beauty as a shield. The two are apparently in the midst of divorce negotiations. Hi, Natalie. Are you still mad at me? I think it's natural for you to be angry, but let's talk as friends if you're not too upset with me. I want you to hear me out. Are you joking? How can you say such a thing? How can you be so shameless? How can you say that knowing what you've done? No, we will never talk again. Don't ever talk to me. You look like you don't even remember what you did to me. If you have no idea what you've done, now you listen. You cheated on me with my fiance. Do you remember now? You contacted me like nothing happened. Something is wrong with you. You cheated with your friend's fiance and you're still trying to be friends? What a shame. Ah, I see. So you can do things like this without hesitation because you're not normal. Wait, please calm down, Natalie. No, I didn't mean it. Please, just listen to me. Well then, what did you mean? I didn't do anything wrong. It was him who first approached me. Paul did? Yes, he wanted to talk to you and ended up grumbling, so I'm not the one at fault here. I was completely deceived by Paul. He told me all sorts of things and made me think you're the bad one. I was listening to Paul's story and I couldn't help but feel sorry for him. It looked like it was difficult for him to be with you, Natalie. He said he felt lonely since you were too busy with the preparation for the wedding. The wedding is important, he gets it, but he wants you to spend more time with him. You spend months just choosing a dress, you know? He also said you always look at dress magazines and don't pay attention to him and it makes him sad. If it takes that much time just to choose a dress, then when it comes to choosing a venue and deciding on the hall, it feels like it will take forever. During that time, he'll be completely neglected, you know. If you hear a story like that, don't you feel sorry for him? What? He said that to you? I can't believe it. Are you lying? I don't want to believe anything you say anymore. Natalie, please believe me. I'm telling you the truth. I felt bad and kept his company. Then his tone changed and we started to contact each other more and more. Eventually, our conversation didn't stop with just you and Paul, and we started to talk about me and Paul. Paul began to say more kind words to me too, but I tried not to waver in my feelings because I knew Paul had you. But little by little, Paul started to express his feelings to me indirectly. He flirted with me, and then we crossed the line. No way. Him and I are very close to our wedding. How could you do such a thing? The more I hear your story, the more I feel angry. And you are giving me excuses, but you can't say anything about that. I don't really care how you guys started at all. I'm very sorry. I wasn't thinking right. I regretted that I let him make a pass at me, and I told him I'd not see him again. I really won't see or contact Paul from now on, so please forgive me. 
Can't you believe my words this time? I'm apologizing so much, so please forgive me. After all, we're best friends, right? But you are responsible for making him feel that way. People get prenuptial doubts. You might have been very busy with preparations, but I'm sure Paul had a lot to think about too, right? Don't you think it sucks to let him have any sort of doubts? You need to take care of your SO. Marriage is an event for two people. Weren't you the one caught up in your feelings, right? I understand marriage is a dream event for women, and there are many things you want to do, but I think you shouldn't forget about Paul's feelings while getting too excited about it. Hey, you're judging me after you had an affair with him? You don't feel bad, do you? You're not apologizing, you're preaching to me. Besides, I consulted with Paul about the wedding hall and even the dress, but he didn't listen to anything I had to say and just told me to handle everything on my own. He wasn't cooperative at all. I wanted to decide so many things with Paul. I felt very lonely too. You haven't felt bad at all and you're blaming me without even knowing my feelings. I do. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't sleep at night fearing when this would come to light. I was very nervous and it was hard for me and it made me go deeper with him. If you were so insecure, you wouldn't repeatedly cheat on me. It's nonsense to feel anxious and miserable and then deepen your relationship. You're just making excuses and enjoying yourselves together. I was too busy to sleep. He let me take care of all wedding preparation. Then he's been cheating with women at bars. He could have done better by helping me with the preparation. You should have told me his grumbling and then I could have done it differently. You two have no right to say that this is hard. I am the one who suffers the most. On top of that, Paul even lied to you and said I wasn't paying attention to him. My best friend is so anxious about getting caught cheating that she can't even sleep, yet she deepens her relationship with Paul. How much more are you and Paul going to hurt me? I'm terribly sorry, Natalie. But don't worry, I won't ever see him again. We can still be friends. I was just fooled by Paul too. I was also suffering every day because I couldn't tell you the truth. I was a mess, but now I see things clearly. My friendship with you is more important than Paul. I want to go out and do things with you like before and have you listen to my troubles. Do you realize that you're only saying things that are convenient for you? It's crazy how you can talk so selfishly. How dare you say that after you stole my fiancé? Very selfish to say that we can be friends again. Have you ever considered my feelings now? You always talk about yourself. I don't have any sense of remorse in what you say. When I heard your excuses, it made me feel even worse. Why would you say something so horrible? I'm apologizing this much. Why don't you forgive me? You're like a monster, Natalie, for not forgiving me, even though I've apologized so many times. Are you kidding? I won't forgive you, and we're done. Goodbye. Okay, that's how you speak to me? Well then, let's see what will happen to your dad. Don't you know my father gives me anything I ask him for? I have a dinner date with him tonight. What if I ask my dad to fire him? He's got nothing to do with this. This is between you and me. You threaten us just because he works at your dad's company. That's unfair. Besides, He's going through a really important time right now, working late every day, and it's tough on him. I threatened you. I didn't mean it, but if I did, I'm sorry. I don't like saying that kind of stuff. You're my BFF, but it's a fact that your dad works at my dad's company. I don't want him to think ill of your dad. So you get what I mean, don't you? Well, but he won't do anything strange for revenge. Neither me nor my dad are those kinds of people. Anyway... I won't see Paul again. I believe we can be friends again. You should make the right decision when I talk to you next time. See ya. After three months. Hi, Natalie. I have something important to talk about. Something important? Is it about our broken friendship? Oh, well, actually, it's more important than that. What is it then? I'm pregnant now. I just learned it last week. Congrats. I didn't know you found the one. Don't waste your time to talk to me, you have your partner. Actually, the father is Paul, your former partner. What? What's going on? And you said, my former partner? Since I'm carrying Paul's baby, I should be the one to marry him, right? Please make a change to the wedding. I will be the bride. I don't understand. I'm confused. Are you telling me you have a baby with Paul and changing our wedding? Is it because you're trying to get back at me? I just went out to dinner with him yesterday. To begin with, didn't you end your relationship? Paul seemed normal at yesterday's dinner. He didn't look like he was still involved with you. Were you two lying to me again? No, we weren't lying to you. Paul forced me. I told him to end the relationship because I wanted to be friends with you. Don't you remember you scolded me severely before? At that time, I was truly remorseful. I didn't want to be scolded like that again. And I really wanted to go back to being friends with you. But he didn't listen, so I had no choice. It's hard to say no when someone is showing you so much affection, isn't it? It was difficult to refuse, but I talked it over with Paul many times. I tried to convince him, 
but he was very persuasive. I heard you were really angry at Paul that day. He called me that night. He said he was tired since you were always mad. Men want comfort at the end. I understand why you would be angry, but Paul is someone who gets lonely easily, so you need to be kind to him. Stop, stupid. He cheated on me and didn't apologize. You would be mad too. And calling you that same night, something was wrong with Paul. It seems like Paul hasn't learned his lesson at all. You and Paul are both terrible people who live only for your desires without any sense of reason or morality. And of course, his parents will be surprised with a new bride. What do you plan to do about that? Not really. They understand. You've met them? Wait, I'm getting even more confused. Uh-huh. They own a company, right? Yes, of course. I'm his fiance. Actually, their company is one of the clients of my parents. They have many businesses and are very close. Is that so? That's how you met him. Even so, it's not right for Paul's parents to move forward with the plans without saying anything to me. His parents are very happy to have good connections with my parents. They treat me as their own daughter. My parents are also happy to have an heir. It seems like Paul's parents would be happier if I was the one marrying into their family rather than you. I feel loved by him, welcomed by his parents, and we have a baby on the way. I'm very happy. No way. They didn't say anything at all. Why wouldn't he say anything about such an important matter? I feel like such a fool. Maybe it's pity to tell you. My parents don't know that he was your fiancé, but you don't have to know everything, don't you agree? So I don't plan on ever telling my mom and dad that Paul was your fiancé. Don't you think both my parents would be happier if they never knew? So, is this all clear? You're the only one who sucks. Everyone will be happier. I'm sorry, but Paul and I are already happy. This is a so-called happy ending. Give me a break. Don't make a fool of me. I can't believe his parents. They betrayed me for their benefit. Making fun of me as a family? I feel bad to steal your fiancé. My bad, but you'll forgive your friend, right? But you know, it's natural for people's feelings to change, right? Paul and I were destined to be together. It was just a matter of meeting in a different order. So please, don't blame Paul. Friends? Yeah, you found the perfect man for me. Saves me time. Enough. What about my life? That is not a friendship. I could have had the best life by marrying Paul. I don't ever want to see you again. I don't want to see Paul or his parents or even you. I can't trust anyone anymore. What are you saying? We're BFFs. Best friends forever? Oh, you know what? You'll be babysitting my baby. The child of Paul, whom you once loved, and the child of your best friend. If I have to ask somebody, I think Natalie would be the best choice to take care of our baby. So you need to learn cooking as well. You're good at that kind of thing, aren't you? I believe you can handle it better than me. Besides, I want to have dinner dates with Paul even after the baby is born. Stop it. I'm not your servant. That's enough. I can't stand my life with you around. Please leave me alone. You've messed up my life so much, so please grant me this last request. Oh, well then, let's just see what happens to your dad. His fate depends on me. It'll take me just a word to let him go. This is unfair. You know I can't say anything against it. Now, you're like a devilish woman. To be able to do such horrible things, you're not even human. I can't bear with the terrible things you're doing to me, but please don't involve my father in this. What can I do? If you want to hold a grudge, blame your dad. All right, let's start with the wedding preparation. You pick up the best wedding dress for me and the venue. Huh? Are you really planning to ask me for a favor at this point? I'm so confused. I still can't keep up with all this. I've been doing it. The dress is fitted for me. It would cause trouble to the wedding hall. That place, it's a shabby chapel for my wedding. Somewhere fancy, please. And change the dress, too. Oh, and you should seat yourself in the front row. What? Why? I want you to take in the moment of my happiness. I can't wait for my wedding. It'll be the best moment in my life. You must be kidding. Why do I have to help to make you happy? You stole my fiancé. I was holding back for my dad, but I can't take it anymore. I feel bad for my dad, but I'm done with you, bitch. Bitch! I've never ever thought of you as a friend. I've always wanted to be free. You don't deserve a wedding. Go to hell. I hope Paul and his parents get what they deserve. Trying to be happy by taking away someone else's life? God won't forgive that. You crossed the line. I can't forgive you, Natalie. Your dad will be fired. He has a job because we were friends. Did you think that useless, middle-aged man could get another job? I will ask my dad to fire your father tonight. Suffer like the poor. How can you say that my dad is useless? He's your dad, stupid Natalie. Why would he be any different? Look at you. You just lost your fiancé. I don't care about me, but he isn't useless. You better ask your parents or you'll regret it for life. Nonsense. You'll live your life as a loser, regretting your decision. After two months. Ah, Natalie, it's been a while. How are you? 
Now, how can you talk to me? Didn't I tell you to leave me alone? I don't even want to see your name anymore. My dad left the company, so I have no reason to listen to you. Don't tell me you care about me. We are good, don't worry. So it's okay for you not to contact me anymore. That's good. I'm happy to hear that, my best friend. So, how will you threaten me now? What do you mean? I haven't done anything like that until now. I didn't mean to force you to do anything, really. No matter what you think, I believe we're besties. No one harms their best friends. There have been misunderstandings until now, but even then, we're still best friends, right? But ones that can steal their BFF's fiancé? Well, I apologized about it. Also, all the unreasonable things I've told you. I won't make any more excuses, so please, please talk to your dad. Talk to him. About what? To come back. You wanted him to be fired, and now you want him back? I'm listening. What made you change your mind? I didn't do anything. He quit all of a sudden, before I asked my parents. Oh yeah, why is that? I'm the one asking. I didn't tell my dad, expecting you to apologize. Did you have something to do with this, Natalie? I didn't do anything. It's terrible you'd suspect me like that. You said he had a job because we were friends. Isn't it good for the company? I don't understand why you would want him back. You were right. Your dad is elite. I had no idea that your dad was so crucial for the company. You realized too late, though. Your dad was in a very important position in the company. I didn't know, but it's a mess since he resigned. He got the job at one of our competitors, and what's worse, many great employees are leaving. Total mess. Oh, my condolences. I told you right, my father is going through a very important time at work and has been working very late. He has been going out to dinner with important clients at night and receiving calls from various people, so every day seems hectic for him. It's very tough on my dad because your dad was that talented person. There's more. For some reason, we lost our clients or our competitors. We're losing money. Last month was a total loss, and we may go bankrupt at this rate. Huh, I had nothing to do with it. You've threatened me, talking about the company, but you never knew about my dad. You always only care about yourself, so it's no wonder. Well, it's just difficult for me. I'll tell you what, my dad was working for the company because of his capability, nothing to do with me and you. The reason why I've obeyed your bullshit was because I knew your dad can spoil you. If he was let go because of me, it would look like all his effort was gone, and I can't stand it. Honestly, others appreciate his capability. Who cares? What I'm asking you is to convince him. If you won't, then I'll be in trouble. If you did nothing like you said, how come you'll be in trouble? I wonder. Don't lie. My dad is mad at me. Your dad resigned because I was mean to you. I saw him get so angry for the first time. He told me to apologize and get your forgiveness. Natalie, you did something. Busted. Yeah, I told him. I knew it. You have no idea what you did. Did I tell you I'm not going to tell my mom and dad about Paul and your relationship? It was your own decision, right? I had just told him what you said, that you were trying to let him go. He was very mad and took action. He didn't move to a competitor by chance. They've been offering him a position. Actually, the person my father was having dinner with was someone from a rival company, and he considers my dad important. But he stayed because we were friends. Now, once he heard you, why should he stay? So he accepted their offer. He explained the reason of resignation. He said he was asked to stay, but... People left of their own free will to follow him. They used to call my dad's cell phone all the time. People who admire my father want to quit their jobs and follow him. My dad convinced them to stay in their current company, but they still ended up following him. He didn't ask them to follow, so what can he do? What can he do, you say? Don't be irresponsible. At the end of the day, my dad will get rid of me. I can't live without him. I'm going to have a baby soon. What should I do? You've been spoiled. Stand on your own feet. You have Paul, even if you lose your dad. His parents own a company, so isn't everything good? You're loved by Paul, and you have a baby in your belly, so you must be happy, right? If you are that happy, you can live without your father's support. So I thought. Then his parents tried to start a business with our competitor. Your dad rejected it. Now my dad knows them and cut them off. So they lost clients. If they can't find a big client before the end of the year, surely they'll go bankrupt. I didn't know your father had so much power. Why didn't you tell me about your father? Holy moly. Sounds like you're the loser, not me. You are the one that judged my father based on your own assumptions. Oh, come on. Paul broke our engagement for the wedding. How come I'm responsible for the cancellation fee? Well, it was under your name and you canceled it. Blame Paul if you need to. I did. His family told me that meeting with me was the worst thing in their lives. That family is just terrible. I don't want him. You can have him. So please, Natalie, forgive me. I'll tell you what. Paul kind of told me the same. What? He said he was over with you and wanted to start over with me. He was fooled by you, he said. But his story was completely different from your story. 
He said you liked Paul even before I started dating him. You fell in love with Paul at the university festival, right? But Paul didn't know about you and started dating me. You had been harboring a crush on Paul all along. You two are truly selfish. Look at you now. I have zero intention of getting back with him. You'll never get our forgiveness. I finally freed myself from you both and decided to face my own feelings. So I don't want to talk to you or Paul anymore from now on. Tell this to your dad, please. Wait, we are besties. We've been friends for over 10 years, but you still betray me? You betrayed me first, Nell, as I already told you. I've never ever thought of you as a friend. I've hated you. I always felt like I was being treated like a slave. I was finally starting to calm down and distance myself from you now. Then you contact me again. It made me feel really bad. I'm so sorry. I regret everything. I mean it. So please, at this rate, I have to raise my baby just by myself. With no money and no place to live. My baby is innocent. So just help, please. Sure, your baby is innocent, but no. You just tried to use your baby in negotiation. Why would I help such a person? You always put yourself first, no matter how much I talk. Why don't you try to make an effort to solve this on your own? This is the only advice I can give you in the end. Goodbye. You shall regret this for the rest of your life. Thereafter. Nell's dad's company lost many great workers and soon went bankrupt. So did Paul's parents' company. I feel pity for Nell's dad, but he was not respectful at the end. Nell should have realized how significant my father's influence was. Paul's parents suffer the consequences. I heard Paul works night and day in order to pay back the debt. I guess it's good for him to keep himself busy. Nell lost both her dad and Paul. Looks like she's doing her best to live in an old, tiny apartment. She's been very dependent without any skills, so she lives paycheck to paycheck. She's very nervous about being a single mother and keeps texting me, but I never reply. I don't block her contact because I care for her baby. If she really changes, I may help them. Oh, I was not ready for the whole relationship thing, but I finally moved forward after meeting a guy my dad introduced me to. He's very honest and kind, and I'm very happy to be with him. I'm seriously considering a future with him now. For the first time in my life, I enjoy my life calmly, not being afraid of Nell's intervention. Hey, are you out somewhere right now? Yes, I have some errands near the train station, but I'll be back soon. What's up? I'm sorry to bother you while you're out, but did we receive the wedding invitation at our house? Wedding invitation? Yeah, yeah, the one that was in an envelope. Come to think of it, I feel like something similar arrived yesterday. Really? Where is it now? It was addressed to you, so I left it in the room. Room? Mine? Yes, I think I put it on the desk. Got it. I'll check it out now. By the way, whose wedding is it? Is it a relative getting married? Nah, it's not a relative. It's my childhood friend from middle school. Oh, I see. I didn't know you had such a childhood friend. I had no idea. I think you met them once right after we got married. Really? I don't remember at all. Well, it's understandable. They're not someone who stands out much, and we just exchanged brief greetings. Yeah, we really didn't keep in touch on a regular basis, did we? Yeah, that's true. But recently, we connected on social media. We decided to meet up after a long time and went out for a meal. Oh, I see. So, it was a long-awaited reunion. Exactly. We were all excited talking about our past experiences from middle school. Oh, if that's the case, I would have loved to join in. I might have learned some stories from your childhood. Hey, hey, stop it. I was a model student, you know. Oh, really? Have you heard various tales from your mother-in-law? Don't believe everything my mother tells you. She just can't keep her mouth shut about anything. So, on that day, you had a lively conversation about the past, got drunk, and came home late, right? That's right. But haven't I already apologized for that day? It was the day he informed me about getting married. Well, that's good news. Right? When I asked when the wedding is, he said it's in two weeks. Two weeks from now? It's coming up soon. Right? That's why I told him I haven't been invited to the wedding. We couldn't invite him to our wedding due to the limited number of guests, so it couldn't be helped, right? Well, that's true, too. But it's my childhood friend's wedding, and I insisted that I really want to go. 
Did you perhaps insist forcefully? Well, kind of. Huh? Wasn't that inconvenient for them? It seems like they had already finished sending out the invitations. So they hastily prepared an additional one for me. <laughs> oh, well. You should definitely express your gratitude for that. Preparations for a wedding can be quite challenging, you know. I understand. Since it's a special celebration, make sure to offer your blessings wholeheartedly. Of course. Oh, and there's one more thing I want to mention just in case. Something you want to mention? What's the matter? By the way, we're planning to go on a trip right after the wedding. Huh? A trip? Who are you going with? It's another friend who will be attending the wedding. Oh, did I not mention it before, after all? No, it's the first time I'm hearing about it. Oh, right. I'm sorry. It turned out to be a post facto notification. It's okay, really. It's been a long time since you last saw each other. I'm sure there will be a lot to catch up on. Thank you. I'll make sure to buy souvenirs and bring them back. Look forward to it. Yes, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. During the trip, I might not be able to respond immediately if you contact me. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Have a great time. Well then, I still have some shopping to do, so talk to you later. The day before the wedding. Dennis? Hmm? What's up? Tomorrow is your childhood friend's wedding, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Since the venue is far away, as we discussed earlier, we're staying at a hotel in the same location the night before. So you're already there at the destination? I've arrived, just relaxing at the hotel. Weddings can be quite tiring, so I thought I'd rest up beforehand. I just remembered something. Hmm, w what is it? The hotel you're currently staying at is the same hotel where my cousin had their wedding, right? Huh? It's interesting that your old friend's wedding is taking place at a place where we also have memories. I feel a strange connection. Oh, really? I didn't realize. Huh. Don't tell me you don't remember. Your cousin's wedding? When was that again? It was two years ago. We stayed together and had wine at the rooftop restaurant together, remember? Oh, now that you mention it, I think I do remember. Hey, you're just giving me a half-hearted response. It was my maternal cousin's wedding. The one where you got drunk and started dancing? I got drunk? Oh, uh, yeah, that time. You seem to be forgetting a lot of things. What's gotten into you? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It must be that. You know. What is it? Earlier, a friend kindly sent room service. Room service? You're getting quite the treatment, huh? Yeah. I really have great friends, so they delivered a top-quality wine, and I ended up getting a little drunk. I see. It's fine to have a little drink, right? It's a pre-celebration for the wedding. Make sure you don't have a hangover for tomorrow's wedding, okay? Y yeah I know. I won't do anything embarrassing. Is that so? I remember that time at my cousin's wedding when you got drunk and started dancing. How embarrassed I was. I'm really sorry about that. I was just having fun, and my body moved on its own. What do you mean, it moved on its own? When you put the champagne cooler bucket on your head and started dancing? Whoa, please stop. But everyone was really getting into it, right? My face was completely red. Actually, I don't remember much about that moment myself. It's easy for the person who can forget, really. But it was a great wedding, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. I hope your friend's wedding turns out to be a beautiful one, too. I'm sure it will. Oops, it looks like my friend called me. So I'll go for a bit. Oh, they called you at this hour? Seems like it. They probably have something to discuss with me. Maybe they want advice from me, as someone who has been through a wedding before. 
Yeah, that might be true. But don't give them any strange advice, okay? I know. Well, then I'm off. I don't know when I'll be back to the room, so make sure you go to bed early. Okay, good night. Good night. The wedding day. The wedding just ended. I see. Good job. It was an amazing wedding. Well, that's good to hear. Both our friends and the bride looked incredibly happy. It's truly a joyful occasion. The food was delicious, too. The skills of the chef here are top-notch. I'm jealous. I really wanted to taste their food again. Let's come here again together. Anyone can eat at the restaurant, you know. That sounds exciting. By the way, would you mind sending me some photos? Photos? What kind of photos do you want to see? Anything is fine. Wedding photos or food photos. I haven't been to anyone else's wedding lately, so I kind of want to see. Sure, no problem. Well, let me see. What should I send? I'll start with this photo. What's this? It's a photo that includes all the attendees of the wedding. I see. The one in the middle is the bride and groom. You're standing next to the groom, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. You mentioned earlier that you're going on a trip with your friends after this, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. Which one of your friends is going on the trip with you? Ah, you see the guy on the far left of the photo wearing glasses? I'm going with him. Ah, huh. is that so? Yeah, but what's up? Is something wrong? Well, how should I put it? You're going on a trip with just two guys? Yeah, that's right. It's not really strange, is it? Uh, well, I just find it a bit unusual, that's all. Unusual? What do you mean? You're not fond of traveling in large groups, are you? I find it surprising that you're going on a trip with just the two of you. Uh, yeah? Is that so? To tell you the truth, we were originally planning to go with about five people. But everyone's schedules ended up conflicting. In the end, it's just me and this guy. Oh, I see. That's too bad. Yeah, it really is. Well, you know, I get along really well with this guy. And when it's just the two of us, we can talk about various things. I see. It's precious to have someone you can maintain a friendship with, even as adults. Exactly. Have a great time and take care. I'm looking forward to the souvenirs. Three days later. It feels like it's been a while. I'll be coming home tomorrow, maybe. I enjoyed the trip, too. Hey, Dennis. There's something I want to ask you again. What is it? Who are you with right now? Huh? Who? I already explained that recently, didn't I? It's my friend who wears glasses. A friend who wears glasses. I see. What's the matter? Why do you keep asking me the same thing over and over? Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing, really. It's nothing? Are you sure there's nothing wrong with you? It's nothing strange, okay? I was just a little curious. Huh. Why? There's no deeper meaning behind it. I just asked out of curiosity. Is that so? Well, as long as that's the case. You're not lying, right? What's that supposed to mean? Is there something you want to say? I don't have anything to say, really. Then what's with that attitude? Attitude? I'm just being myself as always. I can't believe that. It doesn't seem like it at all. If you have something to say to me, just say it clearly. What's wrong with you? It's nothing, really. I see. Maybe it's just my imagination. I'll buy you a souvenir on my way back, so please wait a bit longer. Take your time. It's fine. Take care, okay? Do you have any preferences for souvenirs? Hmm, not really. That's a problem. I want to buy something that will make you happy. I see. 
but unfortunately I can't think of anything either. Well then, I'll have to rely on my sense of choice. I'll be back tomorrow evening. All right, I understand. Next day. Hey, I arrived home a while ago, but where are you? Respond to me. Welcome back. I came back and no one is here, and it's already late at night. You didn't come home. I tried contacting you, but got no response. I was worried. Did you enjoy the trip? Huh? Uh, yeah. It was fun, but more importantly, where are you? At my parents' house. Your parents' house? Yes. Why? Did something happen? Yes. Something serious happened. Something serious? Why did you suddenly go back to your parents' house? Can't you think of anything that might be related to you? Something related to me? No, there's nothing like that. Really? I'm serious. Well then, is the reason you went back to your parents' house because of me? I can't think of any other reason. Why? What happened? We were having a normal conversation in yesterday's messages, weren't we? I found out. You know? Huh? Aren't you cheating on me? What? Cheating? Don't play dumb. Wait a minute. I don't understand. You don't understand? You should understand it yourself, shouldn't you? Explain it to me properly. This is getting out of hand. I know everything, no matter how much you try to hide it. What are you talking about? I have no clue, and I'm just as lost as you are. I want to hear the truth from your own mouth. Please, just confess. What do you mean by confess? Even if you stubbornly try to keep it hidden, it's useless. You will end up regretting it yourself. I'm not hiding anything. You're being persistent. Hey, I'll ask you one more time. Who did you go on the trip with? Huh? You're bringing that up again? It's an important matter. How many times are we going to talk about this? Just answer me. Who did you go on the trip with? Answer me honestly. Stop it already, or I'll get angry. What's wrong with you? Getting angry like that is pointless. The person you went on the trip with shouldn't be the one wearing glasses. How can you say such a thing? It's just baseless accusations. It's not baseless accusations. Don't say whatever you want without any evidence. Evidence, you say? Do you think I'm saying these things without any basis? Huh? Are you saying you have some kind of evidence? I do. Huh? What do you mean by that? Among the wedding photos you sent me, I saw someone I know. It was just a coincidence, though. Someone you know was among them? I didn't hear anything about that. Well, I didn't say anything. But I had been sensing some unnatural behavior from you. Until I saw that photo, I didn't know either. My behavior? Yes. I felt something was off, so I immediately contacted that acquaintance of mine. You contacted them? Yes. I asked them to find out who you were traveling with. You did what? You went to such lengths. That's despicable. We'll soon find out who's really despicable here. What are you talking about? What kind of cowardly arrangement did you make? I didn't do anything cowardly. I just asked an acquaintance for help. I asked that acquaintance of yours, the one with glasses, to inquire about your trip. That's... it can't be true. I never expected you to do something like that. I don't have time to dwell on your shock right now. Snooping around? Why would you stoop to such behavior? I admit that I acted on my own without informing you. But there was something I needed to confirm even if it meant resorting to such measures. Confirm? What do you mean? That acquaintance asked your friend with glasses 
if there were any plans for a trip with you after the wedding. Huh? Well, apparently that person said so. There are no plans for a trip. That's a lie. There's no way that's true. This is the final question. Who on earth did you go on a trip with? No, no. it's different. It's not true. That's impossible. Are you still planning to make excuses? But it's impossible. I'm absolutely certain. We were definitely together. Oh, really? What's with that tone? Are you saying you can't believe what your own husband says? That you trust the words of others more than your own husband? Even I don't want to believe it. It's such a sad situation. Please stop this intrusive questioning. I don't want to damage our relationship as a married couple. Whether it gets damaged or not is up to you. Besides, if you're so certain that you are indeed enjoying a trip with that guy wearing glasses, why would he lie and say there was no trip with you? How should I know? Maybe he's misunderstanding something. Misunderstanding? What kind of misunderstanding? I'm telling you, there's no way I would know about that. He's always been someone who says things that I don't understand. Ah, then I have a good idea. A good idea? It's probably just a terrible idea, isn't it? That's not true. How about we call that friend of yours right now and ask him directly? Because the two of you are close enough to go on a trip together, right? And for several nights, just the two of you. Y yeah, that's right. What's wrong with that? In that case, I'd love to hear stories about your memories together. You must have taken some photos together, right? It would be strange if there isn't at least one, don't you think? Uh, well, I'm not sure. He doesn't like taking photos. He always says that, so we don't have many. I see. That's a shame. Well then, all the more reason to talk to him directly. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? How do you plan on talking to him directly? You don't even know his contact information, do you? No, I don't. Then how are we going to... The three of us, you, me, and our friend with glasses, will have a group call. Isn't it a good idea? A group call? Is there a problem? If you really went on a trip with him, you shouldn't feel guilty about anything, right? Well, let me try contacting him first. Ah, by the way... Don't tell him to coordinate your stories. I've asked our acquaintance to tell him the truth, not to collude. C collude I have no idea what you're talking about. Come on, connect with him quickly. Right now. Well, well, by the way, he's currently abroad for work. Abroad? Yeah, that's right. Considering the time difference, he's currently working. So if I contacted him now, it'll be bothersome. Oh, I see. That's unfortunate. Well, there's nothing we can do then. Anyway, there's no evidence anywhere that I cheated. But it's strange, you know. What do you mean? Are you still doubting me? It's just... It's strange. On the first day of your trip, my acquaintance informed me about the existence of a social media account... Social media? It's an account belonging to a woman. She posted saying, On my way back from a friend's wedding, I'm here on a trip. What does that have to do with me? Why should I care about someone else's posts? And along with that post, there are photos. Want to see? Huh? Why would I care about someone else's photos? I just sent it. Take a look. This woman and the man she's arm-in-arm -arm with in the photo? Even though he's wearing sunglasses, don't you think he looks familiar? I... I don't know. Who are you talking about? Do you have a twin brother or something? I don't have one. What are you even talking about? Sure, he resembles me a bit, but it's just a coincidence. You were on a trip with this woman, right? I wasn't. Absolutely not. 
You're still being stubborn, huh? I don't know that woman at all. I have obtained information about this woman as well. Huh? I've confirmed it with an acquaintance. The relationship between this woman and you. Relationship? She was also in the first photo you sent. Your ex-girlfriend? What? I don't have any such woman. Really? The wedding was also a gathering of people who have known you for a long time. Your past relationships and friendships were all out in the open. That's just a joke that people around me made for fun. It was just a joke, I'm telling you. Is that so? But is your ex-girlfriend in the photo sending you intense gazes? That That's not something I'm aware of. It's all speculation. I see. Well, then why don't you take a closer look at that ex-girlfriend's SNS? Huh? You thought there was only that one photo, right? There are actually many more photos posted. That's ridiculous. Ah, uh, just the thought of looking at them again is making me feel sick. This is a photo of you and your ex-girlfriend opening a bottle of wine at a hotel, right? Probably the day before the wedding, I suppose. Your jacket is hanging on the chair, so there's no mistake. Hey, stop it. Don't look at it. And then, this photo here. You're embracing each other on the beach. There are still many more, like this one. Please, just stop. I'm begging you. When you mentioned going on the trip after the wedding, I felt a little uneasy. Uneasy? It's unusual for a guy to go on a trip with a male friend. I didn't feel that close to your friend with glasses. I wondered if you would really go on a trip alone with someone like that. Well, you see, I had a feeling, but I never wanted to believe it. Honestly, I don't want to believe it. Oh, Rosie. It was the right decision to investigate, just to be sure. I didn't intend for things to turn out like this. Please forgive me. You always had a tendency to be a little unfaithful, didn't you? You had many relationships with other women as well. It's only you for me. That's why I chose to be with you, based on that promise. You have so many wonderful qualities, and you loved me too. Yes, that's absolutely true. The only person I truly love from the bottom of my heart is you. It's too late to say such things now. But we made a promise when we got married, didn't we? That you would never cheat on me. It's different. This is not about cheating. I just went on a trip with a friend. A friend, you say? Spending two nights alone with your ex-girlfriend and then saying something like that? How can you? Please believe me. The moment I saw your message, with a photo of your ex-girlfriend, I felt anxious. Maybe, well, just in case. But I thought you would never betray me. It's not like that. When I discussed this with an acquaintance, they mentioned that they've noticed you and your ex-girlfriend getting closer recently. Really? It seems that you've been exchanging messages and heart emojis excessively on social media. Th those are just regular communications. Real life and social media are different. So you're saying you didn't have any personal contact behind the scenes? That's obvious, isn't it? Hmm, but it's a pity. Well, there's evidence there, too. What? Are you saying there's still something else? That's what I'm trying to say. If I dig a little deeper, I can find evidence of your infidelity in abundance. Evidence? I saw your private chat with your ex-girlfriend. There was an exchange between the two of you. What? How did you get to see that? Someone who was in the same chat took screenshots and sent them to me. When I read the contents, I felt like crying. This is a misunderstanding. You call it a misunderstanding. What do you think was written there? Wasn't it something like, I'm getting bored with my wife lately. I want more excitement. I was drunk when I wrote that. That's not how I truly feel. 
Just be quiet. And here's something else. Back then, it was more fun. Getting married has too many restrictions. I'm getting tired of it. I want to go back to how things were. That's what it says. There's more. Please stop it. I'm begging you. Lately, I feel like my wife is getting older. She used to be beautiful, but young women are still the best. Does anyone know a way to cheat without getting caught? Ah, stop it. Don't say anything anymore. It's because you went too far, isn't it? Someone who was in the same chat told me through an acquaintance. I, I didn't mean it seriously. I see. You said it without any serious intention, right? That's right. I wasn't serious, of course. That's why I decided to believe you in the end. I intentionally let you squirm, believing that you wouldn't cheat. Ah, yes, it's just... This is the result of it all. I'm truly saddened. Disappointed. Please wait for me. Don't push me away like this. I now understand how shallow your love is. Even before we got married, you had a tendency to stray. Each time, you would apologize and promise not to do it again. But it's always the same. Why did you let me swim like this? It means you had doubts about me even before the wedding, right? That's obvious, isn't it? Huh? I wanted you to honestly tell me yourself. Honestly? Tell you myself? I asked you over and over again, didn't I? Is your travel companion really just a friend? I asked that. Ah. But you kept piling lies upon lies. You never made an effort to tell the truth. I can't possibly say that. Why not? But just try telling the truth. You're definitely going to be furious. That's right. Of course I will be. But more than anger, I'm incredibly sad. Ugh. You underestimate the gravity of your actions. It's a lie that you love me. It's not a lie. That much is true. If you truly love me from the bottom of your heart... You wouldn't say such terrible things behind my back on social media. That, that's, it was because of the alcohol. Besides, you wouldn't engage in such obvious infidelity. Because it would deeply sadden me. It didn't matter to you if I was deeply saddened. Please forgive me. Are you admitting it? I admit it. You were meeting with your ex-girlfriend, right? Yeah. It's true, the person I went on the trip with was someone I used to date. So it's true. But I didn't cheat. What? What are you saying? Even at this point, you still refuse to admit it? I did meet her, and we had a pleasant conversation about the past, but I didn't cheat. Any more lies will destroy you, you know. It's your misunderstanding. I admit that my words and actions were wrong, but I absolutely didn't cheat. Then who did you go on a trip with? I'm telling you, I didn't cheat. So you're sticking to that stance. We're not making any progress with this conversation. It's because you have a strange misunderstanding. Fine, I understand. Since we're not getting anywhere like this, could you come to my parents' house? Let's sit down and have a proper talk. Your parents' house? Why do I have to go there? There are limitations to exchanging messages. Let's properly face each other and talk. Then why don't you come back here? I don't want to go back there, unless your innocence in cheating is proven. Why not? Because it seems like you've been in contact with your ex-girlfriend for a while now. The thought of you bringing another woman into our home when I'm not there is unpleasant. I, I didn't do anything like that. Let's discuss that in person. I'm not going. Why not? We can settle the matter right here. It's not something that requires meeting in person, right? What did you say? You're innocent, aren't you? Then come and explain yourself. No way. I'm sorry, but I won't do that. I see. Well, I guess there's no other choice then. What's the matter? 
Look at the sofa in the living room. Huh? The sofa? Yes. What's going on? What's there? Just look. Look quickly. What is it? Is it some kind of document? Take a closer look. What the hell is this? As you can see. What is this? Divorce papers? Isn't it? What are you thinking? If you have no intention of talking directly, then sign it. Huh? Why is it suddenly about divorce? You went on a cheating trip with your ex-girlfriend, didn't you? Someone like that deserves to be dumped. Cheating? It's not like cheating should lead to all this. Just cheating? So you finally admitted that you cheated? No, that's not... Making excuses won't help your case. Don't you have any love for me? The moment your infidelity came to light, any feelings I had for you vanished. Huh? I've been foolishly devoted to you all this time. Anyway, if you have something to say, come to my parents' house as soon as possible. Let's have a thorough discussion there. Please, just calm down for a moment. It's a misunderstanding. There's a misunderstanding between us. Then I'll listen to that so-called misunderstanding from you. I don't want to discuss anything further here. Thereafter. The next day, Dennis, who was filled with fear, showed up at my parents' house and could hardly say anything. He kept repeating his apologies. Regarding the cheating trip, he explained that it was a spontaneous decision to go with his ex-girlfriend. However, it was clear that they had planned it from before our wedding, considering the accommodation reservations and such. His lies were quickly exposed. At this point, I had completely run out of patience with his attempts to cover up the truth. I realized that divorce was the only solution. It was a heartbreaking decision, but from that day forward, I completely cut ties with him. It seems that he tried to reconcile with his ex-girlfriend afterwards, but he was resoundingly rejected. I felt quite exhausted from this whole ordeal, so I decided to spend some peaceful time in my parents' house until I could sort out my feelings. <laughs>